Hello again, welcome back. This is Microsoft. The way I love tech space with their interesting inventions, mainly speaking the latest version of Windows, to which they have been adding too many features. And that sounds good. But it's not. Everyone thought it's the end and started ditching it behind and switched to Linux. I use Arch by the way. So naturally what I did was install Windows 7. The installation wasn't that complicated. It all started from a Reddit post that led me to this webpage. Without any hesitation, I downloaded the thing, burned the ISO file into an USB stick, which is basically putting this in there, and hit the reboot button. It didn't work. <clears throat> that was expected since my feeble brain haven't noticed that the secure boot was disabled. So, I enabled it and tried again. It didn't work. I went ahead and downloaded this very obscure tool off the internet and let it cook for 4 hours and gave it another spin. It didn't work. Sometime later I found this very long tutorial that teaches you how to craft a custom installation media with all the necessary drivers. But I'm kind of lazy and stupid to do it myself. So I looked it up online and found people who did it and well... Boys, it's completed the installation. We are so back. I'm excited. Come on. Wait. It's the sound is working. Wait. It worked. After a successful boot up, I was in. The resolution was messed up and I didn't have any internet. Surprisingly, the sound was working out of the box and then suddenly stopped. I had no time to waste, so I went to my other computer to download sound, network, and GPU drivers that I found online from their official sources. Nice. nice. But after having some connection, something weird happened. Internet Explorer was suggesting me to download Microsoft Edge. And I believed it's not going. Don't f ask me how, but I was able to run Microsoft Edge. Where Edge after some setup, I started to feel it. Home. The nostalgic taskbar, those personalization settings, the sounds, those cute widgets, the wallpapers, the Windows Media Center, and this. And of course OBS didn't work. The version I was using at time couldn't save the footage, so I did what any sane human being would do, downgrade. And well, that solved it. Everyone favorites web browser, Google Chrome. I was able to download the latest version. It was warning me that I'm not going to get any further updates and I have to use Windows 10 to do so. No thanks. I tried some other utility programs like Process Hacker, Malwarebytes, which I removed later on because I don't need an antivirus, Super ISO, Audacity, and IDM, which I used to exploit me being in a third world country, no, it's not India, to download Microsoft Office 2007. The reason was, I don't know, I just felt like it. Also, to rekindle some stupid I used to do, storing my passwords in a good old spreadsheet. I went back to Chrome to run more tests. I tried to download some extensions and visit some websites. I checked on my favorite streamer if he was online and he wasn't. Hmm. He used to be online this time. The best site on the planet that is responsible for the recent climate change loaded just fine, so did the reason why 42% of Americans are suffering from obesity. America. The CIA agents hive and where everything is shines and rainbows. Both took an eternity to load, but mostly, everything was working as intended. <laughs> Since Chrome ran with no complaints, I assumed both Discord and Spotify and everything that depends on Chromium would also work. Well, thanks for the positive open source community, I found this project that is called Armcore that claims to be a standalone client. However, with some inspection, you get to realize it's just an Electron app, which is, you guessed it. Chromium. What it does is simply loads the Discord site with some baked extensions and sadly many of its claimed features didn't work. Give it a stop. Spotify on the other hand also didn't work, though they had a special build for Windows 7 that, well, it banked. With all of that the box for browsing the internet was checked. Or was it? I had one more thing to try. Brilliant.org These guys have every possible piece of knowledge to create AI-powered mass destruction weapons, engineering, physics, programming, data analysis, and... Um... <clears throat> if you want to learn any of those, look no further. Brilliant got your back. 
Instead of just watching and get swallowed by boredom, check out the interactive lessons that teaches by doing, which is a method that is scientifically proven to be six times better. You get to deal with problem solving very soon on your learning climb, which is going to help you grow that smooth brain you've got. Personally, I like their computer science course, that I think is a good start to make you not just write code, but thinking code. If you want to check them out and get all what I was yapping about for free and get a 20% off your annual subscription, click on the link down below in the description. Now, time to write some code. Before I even began, I knew it's just going to be impossible on the long run because we humans advance. Advance backwards. For Node, latest version was out of the table, so I looked for an older version that didn't work. Then I installed an even older version that also didn't work, so I had to install an even, even older version. The well was sort of a success. Next, I tried to install Python got 4 bits and at that very exact moment my footage got corrupted. Yeah. The most version I was able to get to run was 2.7, which is a very old yet powers many life science and tools in 2024. Next on the list was Visual Studio Code that I got installed just fine. No downgrades, nothing. It just worked. Visual Studio, however, didn't. Version 2022 was like a... Uh, 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 uh. So it was... Downgrade time. But it's Microsoft. To use any of their old products, apparently you have to pay them first. Yeah. Visual Studio 2019 supposedly works on Windows 7, but I didn't manage to run it. So I used the Wayback Machine to get Visual Studio 2017 that run nicely, just like the good old days. Dimas. For fun, I tried Raylib, which is a nice and intuitive game development library to work with. Yet, I didn't do anything serious with it, other than making some books move right to left. I went ahead and downloaded an older version of Unity for the sake of science and for all the nostalgia users out there. It was obviously an outdated version, yet it let me log in. I don't use Unity and I'm not planning to, so it was time to move on and try to install the best code editor known to man, NeoVim. Which I lost the original footage of me trying to install it, but it was like getting a bunch of errors, struggling with Lua, and realizing that downgrading every plugin that I have in my config would be a waste of time. So, if you don't know me, I am an Adobe fanboy. I have been using their products since I was sucking milk, and every alternative out there is just full of shit. As for Windows 7, they dropped support for it in 2021. So, downloading older versions was a must. But, the Creative Cloud doesn't provide the old versions. Thus, I had to go on an uh, alternative route. Premiere Pro worked smoothly at first. It even loaded my configuration. Uh, not really. But after a busy timeline, it started to become janky and as slow as a Python script can go. I had one issue with full screen previews. Every time I hit the full screen button, I get stuck in Premiere Pro. Alta 4 wouldn't kill it because it tells you to save the progress you've made. Die. Regarding rendering, it was instantaneous. Unfortunately, I couldn't link it with After Effects, not that I use it very often, but I sometimes need it if I want to make my computer go through torture. Photoshop complained for having no space left, but after clearing some space, that was no more the case. Illustrator, Acrobat, Dreamweaver that asked for network access, and of course I didn't... Um... Well... And every other Adobe software I had at the time launched and ran perfectly. With all of that, it was time to have some real fun. Time for some... Gaming. Starting with the Gaming Palace. I mean, um, uh, Steam, that I honestly expected to be the only program that would work. Why? It's Valve. W what they do is carry legacies, but not anymore. Despite that, I was welcomed with this, which is an issue that wasn't tied to Steam only, but happened with other programs too, alongside screen stuttering that made me thought that the operating system didn't set the correct refresh rate for my monitors. But that wasn't the case at all. Anyways, here is my hardware configuration, and... It was time to crack some games. DS3, the best game of all time, better than Elden Ring, run for 60 FPS, no drops, no stuttering, even while having a bunch of shit happening on my site. Sadly, I don't have any evidence for that because half of my footage got corrupted somehow. But 
trust my word. The experience was way smoother than what I usually get on Windows 10 or 11. Daisy, or formerly known as It didn't work. Due to the fact that I depend on BattleEye as an anti-cheat, which was going to be the case for every game I own that uses any some sort of modern anti-cheat or any kind of modern software. The factory must grow, and yes indeed, it did. Running around my small factory didn't tickle these numbers at all. So, I had to do some fun to finally get it to the good old 10 frames per second. Since this game is written in pure C++, running it wasn't an issue at all. No crashes, no stutters, and a nice smooth experience. Half-Life 2? Nothing interesting but the boring 200 frames per second. Left for that too. The game everyone admires except this man. On ultra settings, I was getting very not stable FPS. That was expected, since it has a lot of moving objects and spawning enemies. And please ignore my CPU's temperature. I haven't changed the thermal pace since I don't know. Anyway, the game was made in the Windows 7 era, so I wasn't expecting anything to go south. And for the first time in my life, Nothing did. Project Zomboid, a game that I absolutely love to see work on Windows 7, but getting it to run was a nightmare. Black screens, freezing, dealing with config files, and having zero FPS. In the main menu. Many believed it's not possible, but with some very advanced debugging and troubleshooting, I finally got it to work. I was getting very unstable frame rates with no mods on, and a good 20 FPS with them, with endless runtime errors. Minecraft. Minecraft was the last game that I thought it wouldn't work. Yet still it did, but not as expected. The frame rates were what I would get in my grandma's computer. Tweaking the settings literally did nothing, so I tried Optifine. That made things... even worse. Some very trusted online sources suggested the issue was from the Java environment, which makes sense. So I did what needed to be done and... Not that much of improvement. I spent more time tweaking more settings without any improvements. And now, can you spot what my feeble brain was dealing with? Zoom in. Zoom in. Yep, right there. With that hotfix, I wanted to try Project Zomboid again, since it's also written in Java. And well, just like Minecraft, I did get some improvements, but... Not as much as what I usually get. Wait, is that a school? <clears throat> Here, the what is kind of a challenge and Overall, Windows 7 is still kind of usable for normal use or if you just want to play some classic video games, which you wouldn't be able to get from their official sources most of the time. Some of the issues they have encountered were GPU drivers crashes, some window artifacts, no TPM, some random errors, never being able to get my microphone to work, it's a $30 USB mic, nothing crazy, and sometimes it does this. For some reason I was getting Windows updates, but they did nothing other than scream with failure install messages. Usability in 2024, 6 out of 10. And that's it. The title is a joke obviously, don't switch to Windows 7, thanks for brilliant for sponsoring this video, that was supposed to be out earlier this month but health is not healthy lately. So, see you on the next one.